but he's nominated a rival politician to the position of Prime Minister. Zaidun al Kinani is a Middle East analyst focusing on Iraq and a fellow at the Arab Center in Washington, D.C. joins me now. He's here in Doha. Good to have you with us on the program. Um, are you surprised that Sadr's supporters have, have gone towards Parliament again on his word? Well, uh, the Sadr's supporters in Iraq or in Iraqi political understanding are uh, known in a, in a very informal way to be blind supporters of Muqtada Sadr. There is very little criticism that can be uh, towards uh, their leader within the Sadrist movement, unlike many other uh, political or religious movements in Iraq. This is not the first time that Muqtad al-Sadr uh, directs or demands uh, his followers or supporters to uh, uh, target or march towards governmental premises whenever there is a disagreement between his uh, political movement and the government or a future government during governmental formation following any election. Um, Sadr is currently moving away uh, from the defensive to the offensive. He was being a bit defensive in the last few months when he struggled to form uh, a parliamentary quorum to form a, gov a government without the support of very few other MPs, whether they be the independent MPs that uh, were newly elected mm. in the recent Iraqi fifth parliament or the coordination framework, as you rightfully mentioned. Um, currently, Sadr is trying to build a new, uh, if you may, uh, rebellious uh, parliamentary opposition role, which he and his movement is preparing for, but at the same time also trying to create the obstacles to the coordination framework whenever uh, a nomination of a certain candidate uh, is being put forward that in one way or another would not meet their interests or agendas in the future. We witnessed very similar obstacles from the coordination framework towards the Sudras movement when the, when, when the ball was at their court to Indeed, form the government. If I could just uh, pop in there, because of course, obviously, you know, Muqtada al Sadr tries to portray the image, and certainly in his speeches uh, and sermons, that he is a nationalist. He may be a Shia Muslim, but he's a nationalist. He cares about Iraq, and he tries to portray anybody in, in the other political spheres as influenced by outside forces, whether they be the West, Europe and the US or Iran. Does that work across the country? Because he wasn't able to get that majority that he needed in October. Uh, so therefore, he, one could assume that he's not liked across the country, but he does have a core support which believe what, believes what he says. Well, a lot of the, 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 the discourses or the forms of discourses and the cards that Sadr tries to exploit in the Iraqi society are, are, are very popular uh, ideas and thoughts and principles and values that Iraqi people, ordinary Iraqi citizens, share across the spectrum. And that is non-interventionism, uh, a limit to Iranian interventionism, a limit to Western interventionism or other regional interventionism. Uh, nationalism is a very popular discourse across the world and not just in Iraq. Uh, and reform for the past few years is, is, is a major uh, uh, discourse or rhetoric that Sadr has been heavily relying on, especially since 2016 up until today. Reform is a, is a, is a, is a major uh, uh, thought, idea that a lot of ordinary Iraqis, especially since the October 2019 protest movement, is a thing that really uh, catches the hearts and the minds of Iraqis, voters or non-participants in the uh, electoral uh, system. So uh, Sadr uh, might find a power vacuum uh, in, 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 in thoughts and ideas that a lot of ordinary Iraqis would like to hear from their political or religious leaders. Uh, you would notice that most of the Shia or prominent Shia uh, uh, political leaders in the Iraqi parliament have uh, very uh, direct affiliations or associations or connections with the Iran proxy interests in Iraq. Uh, so it's a very good opportunity for Sadr to exploit these ideas, to gather the support uh, across the spectrum in Iraq and not just within the Sadr's movement. However, there has been a very rising political consciousness amongst the Iraqi youth uh, since the October uh, 2019 protest movement, as previously mentioned. And this is why we noticed a very low uh, voter turnout. This is why we're noticing an increasing intensity in this intra-Shia political rivalry between the coordination framework and the Sadrist movement, which is very far away uh, from the interests of the ordinary Iraqi citizens, both equally, both the, the people who voted okay. and the people who boycotted the uh, last election. Mr. Al-Khalini, just briefly, because we're running out of time here. If both sides don't agree 
with a potential candidate to become prime minister? How's this going to play out? Are we looking towards a, another general election in some shape or form? Um, that could be a possibility. However, another another possibility or another uh, thing that we're currently witnessing here is that the Sudras movement is trying to uh, delay the coordination framework's uh, possibility to form the government as much as possible. So it does not uh, stay in the record that it took the coordination framework a shorter time than the Sudras movement to form a government. And they might find a, a middle ground uh, solution and agree on a candidate that would satisfy uh, all the uh, political uh, Shia parties in Iraq, similarly to the to the agreement that took place with former Prime Minister Adel Abdel Mahdi in 2018. Well, we'll see what happens.